Welcome to the Awards for Conservation Excellence. I'm proud to introduce to you our five finalists, all of whom are exceptional conservation heroes. People have this image of the tiger as a mighty, powerful, threatening predator in whose wake people scatter and it roams like a king. But ecologically, it's very fragile and it represents uh, our struggle to save nature in this rapidly changing, rapidly developing world. We are destroying precious habitats and breaking them up for mega projects. So it's not a pretty picture as people imagine. I have gotten involved in conservation issues and as a result, uh, false criminal cases have been slapped against me. A mob has invaded and burnt my lab and cars. These are not moments that I have enjoyed. But nobody can put me on a plane and send me out of India. I am there, for good or bad, for 30 years, 40 years, to make conservation work. So the task of carrying on conservation is our responsibility now. There's a million square kilometers of tiger habitat left in the world. And if a large fraction of it can be protected well, like we know how to, we can envision a world with 30, 40, 50,000 tigers a century from now. That's the kind of vision we should have. My name is Ullas Karant, and this is my story. You might expect somebody who spent a lifetime with nature working on conservation to major in the stories now on the rough and the tough stuff. And I've done a bit of that. I've toppled a canoe in the Amazon. I've uh, been arrested a couple of times actually in the Orinoco. That rough tough stuff is good and it was fun and it's led to scientific discoveries that have made a difference. But it's not where the future lies. Where the future lies in taking all of the achievements in conservation which have created the most wonderful medical kit to intervene when there's a conflict between people and wildlife. But to say a medical kit by itself is not what a doctor needs. What a doctor needs is to use that medical kit within a wider health service, a framework which will decide how does humanity in the 21st century wish to live alongside wildlife. And the answer is about an interdisciplinarity that engages every aspect of what we do and which leads to conservation-led development for the developing world. That is where the future lies. I'm David MacDonald. This is a story about conservation. I like to make the comparison uh, between cranes and great works of art. Uh, if great works of art are, just, are destroyed and we have photographs of them, a, a, a facsimile can be made, but if we lose a species, they're gone. It's going to be very, very difficult to ever recreate a species. If people care about cranes and their habitats, even in heavily populated areas of the world like Japan and India, the cranes can flourish. In communicating about cranes, uh, the best way, of course, is to bring them out to see the wild birds. And who can argue that this is a world treasure to see these magnificent creatures in the wild? And I think the ultimate answer to the question about the welfare of cranes is sort of the welfare of humans. Will we care about such things? And I'm optimistic that we will. So. I think the cranes will be with us for a long time to come. My name is George Archibald, and this is my story. I think the biggest challenges that people in my position face are when others say, well, why do you care? Or why do you do this? Isn't it a losing effort? So many of these species have their spokespeople. 
that it became clearer to me that some of the opportunities were with animals living in more remote places that essentially had silent voices or no voices. These kinds of species, I think, certainly need a voice and they offer opportunities for the public to imagine. How do we make it poignant? How do we bring it home that these species need attention? If we can't connect with society at large, with policymakers, with farmers, with fishermen, with people in urban settings, with people who go to zoos, we're not gonna succeed because conservation is not about the science, it's about doing and it's about action. My name is Joel Berger, this is my story. I just love reefs, I love to dive on them, I love, to, I love the animals, the colors, the geometry. I am most satisfied uh, when I'm in a coral reef, one that I haven't uh, dived on or snorkeled on before. Slate in hand uh, and Tim next to me, diving, collecting information about the reef. Well, the effect of my work is ultimately to improve the relationship between man and nature. We can certainly abuse that relationship if we don't do it intelligently and wisely and so I want to be part of that proving that relationship maybe healing that relationship between man and nature I've never felt like giving up I believe that uh, if we work hard enough and we have a long-term view as long as I believe that that there, there can be change that there will be change uh, so I, I've never given up My name is Tim McClanahan. My name is Nyawira Mudega. And this, and this is, is our story. story.